everybody, welcome back. In this video, we're going to do some examples involving the law of total probability that we learned about in the previous video. We're also going to learn Bayes' rule. And if that's making you a little nervous because there's a rule coming and maybe memorization, there totally is not memorization coming. This is going to be very intuitive and something you can come up with. And in fact, it might have been named after you had you been born 230 years ago. I'm going to jump right in with an example. I have three boxes labeled 1, 2, and 3, and each box contains some number of red balls, some number of green balls, and some number of yellow balls. If I were, for example, to look at box 1 and go in there and randomly select a ball, the probability it would be green would be 2 out of 6 because there's a total of 6 balls there and 2 of them are green. So that probability would be two-sixths or one-third. But I want to kick this up a notch and make this problem just a little more challenging. So I'm going to roll a fair six-sided die. And if I get a one on the die, I'm going to select box one. And if I get a two or a three, I'm going to select box two. And finally, if I get a four, five, or six, I'm going to select box three. Now, once I've selected a box or had the die select a box for me, I'm going to go into that box. I'm going to randomly grab a ball out of that box. And now I want to know what the probability that the result of this weird experiment is that we got a green ball. As before, we know this is easy to answer if we knew which box we, we drew the ball from. But the die is choosing that for us, and I'm not really sure. So this sounds like a perfect opportunity to use conditional probability. For example, if I chose, or given I know that the ball came out of box one, then I know the probability of choosing a green ball is two out of six or one third. Whereas if I'm given that the ball came out of box three, for example, then I know the probability of choosing a green ball is two out of five because there's two green balls there out of a total of five balls. So to answer the question, after we roll the die and choose the box and choose the ball, what is the probability we get a green ball? I am going to condition on which box the ball came out of. And to do that, I first am going to establish a little bit of notation. So I'm going to let this capital G be the event that the ball I draw is green. And I'm going to let these 1, 2, and 3 in Roman numerals be the events that I choose from box 1, 2, or 3, respectively. And now we're ready to go. As I said, the probability would be easy if we knew which box the ball came out of. So just looking at these boxes, given we chose a ball from box 1, the probability is green is 2 out of 6. Given we chose a ball from box 2, the probability of a green is 1 out of 6. And given we chose box 3, the probability of a green is two out of five. So let's put it all together with the law of total probability because what we really want is the probability we chose a green ball. So I'm gonna write the probability I choose a green ball by conditioning on which box we chose. So this is gonna be the probability of a green given box one times the probability of box one plus the probability of a green given box two times the probability we chose box two plus the probability of a green given box three times the probability that we chose box three. And we know all of these numbers, so we can put them all together, take time to pause the video and look back and make sure you can compute this, but you're gonna get 14 out of 45. Easy enough. So now let's consider the exact same setup. I've got the same boxes labeled one, two, and three, they have the same numbers and colors of balls that they had before. I'm gonna roll a die, and I'm gonna use the same criterion for choosing a box, and I'm gonna randomly select a ball. So now I wanna look at that ball in my hand, and if it is green, I want to figure out the probability that it actually was chosen from box two. If I know it was chosen from box two, I know that the probability of getting a green is one six because there's one green ball out of six. 
but given that it's green, the probability it came out of box two, that seems kind of backwards. It certainly seems trickier. And again, backwards. When a conditional probability seems backwards to you, when it seems like it would be way easier to compute it in the other direction, that's when you want to take advantage of something known as Bayes' rule. So we're going to derive it right now. No memorization necessary. Uh, here is the event I want to find in the probability. The probability we choose box two, given we observed a green ball. Using the definition of conditional probability, I can write this as the probability of getting a green and choosing from box two over the probability of getting a green. Now I can unravel the definition of conditional probability in order to write this intersection on top as a conditional probability times a single probability alone. And there's two ways to do this, but one way is going to lead us back to the problem that we're trying to solve. So I want to unravel the probability that I drew a green ball and it came out of box two into the probability I drew a green given it came out of box two times the probability it came out of box two. In the denominator, the probability of getting a green ball, we already did this and we did it using the law of total probability by conditioning on which box it came out of. So we get all of these terms down here. This up here from the left side all the way down to the bottom is known as Bayes' rule. It's for times when you want to turn a conditional probability around. And you can memorize it if you want, but there's a lot going on here and a lot of symbols, so I'd really encourage you to just think about what you're doing and realize that you're just as smart as Bayes. Now in our particular problem, I know all these numbers. I'm just gonna go over two of them. The probability I get a green, given I chose from box two, is one-sixth because there's six balls there and one of them is green. Let me go down here to this last term on the bottom. The probability of getting a green, given that I chose from box three, that one is two out of five because there's two green balls and a total of five. And the probability I chose from box three is three out of six because that happens when I roll the die and I see four, five, or six, so that's three outcomes out of the total of six outcomes. So I get three out of six, and the rest of the numbers are computed similarly, and in the end we get five out of 28. In general, Bayes' rule should be used to turn around a conditional probability when it seems backwards, and you're working with some sort of partition uh, like we were here. Now we partitioned the events, uh, which box we drew. We had to draw from one of the boxes, so it was either box one, box two, or box three. And those were disjoint events, and that, that made up the entire space of the box drawing experiment. But in general, we're gonna have a partition of the space omega, and it's gonna be made up of n sets, b1 through bn, and we're gonna have an event a that we're interested in. So if you want to find the probability that the event bj happened given the event a happened. You can rewrite this using Bayes' rule. On the top, you would put the, the flipped probability, the probability that a happened given bj happened times the probability that bj happened. And on the bottom, you would have the probability that a happened. And if you know that, great, you can just use it. But if not, you would expand it out this way using the law of total probability by conditioning on which of the B events happened. Next up, we're gonna talk about random variables. Super important and central to all of probability and statistics, so you don't wanna miss it. I will see you in the next one. Oops.